Hello, beauty entrepreneurs. There are a lot of golden nuggets in this week's episode, so you definitely don't want to miss it. Our guest covers figuring out your need gap for your product, um, how much money at a bare minimum you need for your IP or patent and manufacturing your product. Also, the best way to hire a chemist to help you manufacture your product. And then finally, his experience and benefits of having independent clinical testing. So stay tuned if you want to learn more. Welcome to the Business of Beauty, where we help beauty entrepreneurs in building their business and reaching their dreams. This is your host, David Lee. All right. So hello, beautypreneurs. Welcome to the Beauty of Business show where we help beauty entrepreneurs grow their business and reach their dreams. I'm your host, David Lee. So our guest today has over 20 years of experience creating innovative, big selling beauty products from leading beauty brands such as Revlon, Avon, L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, and Clinique, and that's just to name a few. So, and also he's the founder of Beauty Stat Cosmetics, and his superpower is the ability to actively listen. His name is Ron Robinson at Beauty Stat Cosmetics. So welcome and thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much, David. I really appreciate you asking me to be on today. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, when I when I first when I uh, first saw you online, I found you online, and I, I was like, wow, you know, Ron has over twenty years of experience. It will it would be amazing if we got him on the show. So I'm really glad to have you on on the show. Uh, now, my first question, so I got to ask. So when I asked you what your what your superpower, you said I actively listen. So yeah, what do you mean by that? Well. A lot of people ask me that. That's one of those questions where you go in an interview and people, you know, your hiring manager will ask you, what's your best, what's your best quality, what's your best. So I I took your question as as that. And I think the art of listening is a lost art. I think a lot of people are, it's easy for people to talk and try to share and communicate as much as they want about themselves and what they're doing and not actively listen to a lot of what people that they're what they're saying and this talent or superpower that that I think I have I think it served me well because people really like engaging with me because of my ability to listen so it's one of those things where I could repeat back to people and tell them what they've told me and they didn't really remember they said that or they didn't really understand they had that type of impact on me because they didn't think anyone was really listening uh. <laughs> So yeah. that's why I say that. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. Sometimes like with with the direction of, of the internet and social media, our attention span is like gone in an instant, right? So yeah. having that ability, that superpower to actively listen and engage, it's 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 being becoming rarer and rarer, right? Yeah, I agree. And on also uh, the fact that I've recently launched a beauty brand listening has helped me understand really what the consumer needs what those consumer need gaps are and it helped me develop a brand and a product that really addresses them. so again listen is one of those common threads which is uh-huh. something that has always served me well and i always go back as a way to build not only my business but personally Okay, so sounds like this is the first tip. So you're saying in order to become a good entrepreneur, you should listen. You should listen to your audience, listen to your customers, right? Customers, audience, yeah. advisors, everyone. It's one of those things that I always tell people, you, you know, in fact, I just had this conversation with my my, my team members. Uh, they we were talking about, you know, how is the how, how do businesses evolve? And one way that they evolve is that you may you come, may come out of the gate thinking that you have a very exciting product. Then you start shopping it around with different <laughs> customers. Yeah. And then you you wonder why they're not buying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they're not buying it because you you weren't listening to them. They probably told you, you know, I would rather this or I wish your product did that. Yeah. And instead of taking that on and 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 then revising evolving your product to meet what the customer wants mm-hmm. uh, a lot of entrepreneurs they kind of sit there with what they think is great yeah. and wonder why it's not moving again 
the listening part is really critical uh, in forming and sustaining a business. Okay. So it's less like the field of dreams, like you don't build it and they'll come. It's more of like, listen, then build, then they may come. Right. You make, and then it's and it's an ongoing process. You know, it's not yeah. like one of it's, 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 it's not like an event, like a one time. Oh, I'm going to listen yeah. today, and, yeah. then, and then I'm going to do what I want after that. It's but, oh. you know, it's one of those things you constantly have to listen, okay. and evolve and adapt uh, to the market. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so now let's let's talk about your journey. So all the way back from being a chemist for, for all these big brands. And then from understanding you, you started uh, Beauty Stat Cosmetics, which you didn't have a, a, a line at that point, right? You didn't have a product and then you came up with a product afterwards, right? That's correct. So as you said, I, I've worked in a lot of big brands developing products for you know other big companies. Mm -hmm. And when I launched, I launched Beauty Stat 10 years ago, but it wasn't a beauty product line then, it was an agency. It actually turned out to be one of the first beauty influencer agencies. So I I was an influencer. I had a pretty decent social following and brands would tap into me to, to get exposure through my platforms. Yeah. And we were able to make money. Okay. Then what I know then what I noticed by listening, customers asked, well, you know what? We could pay you beauty stat to post and talk about our product, but what do you have other people? Do you have other influencers that would do the same thing for us? Yeah. And that's how we expanded our service to, to be an influencer agency that represented many different types of beauty influencers. Mm -hmm. And we were then able to sell that service to beauty brands. Wow, and then okay. to finish your other part of your question, you had mentioned like, you know, we didn't start out as a beauty brand. We only launched the beauty brand part of this business about 10 months ago. Mm. So again, yeah. Beauty Stat Agency was first and then yep. Beauty Stat, the brand and the skincare uh, company uh, only launched 10 So that was the evolution. Of, ah, so of, of can we take a step further back? What uh, made you do the jump from being a, a, a full-time chemist which I'm sure money was great, everything was great, and to dive into starting Beauty Stat. Yeah, I start I started Beauty Stat going this is going back 10, 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The point where social media became a, a go-to. You know, Facebook, yeah. everyone was joining Facebook and and there was a lot of time, you know, everyone's friends and contacts were spending time on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing with Twitter as well. So when I saw the rise of those forms, I left the corporate side to form Beauty Stat, which at the time was going to be this a beauty oriented social platform. Mm, okay. So you, you saw the opportunity there and we're like, okay, forget the corporate world. I want to start my own thing. There's this really amazing opportunity, uh, a lot, you know, uh, uh, a big opportunity to reach a lot of a lot of people, right? A big audience. So that's that's kind of how it formed. That's correct. And again, whereas Facebook and Twitter were, were generalist platforms, mm -hmm. at least that the goal was to become a beauty oriented social platform. Mm, very nice. Now then, um, the, the transition. Now, currently, do you do you also still do the influencer marketing? Do you do you also still help other brands? with their product line and getting more exposure for them, or is it primarily sh shifted over to your product that you uh, just produced in what, the last David, nine months? David, great question. I, I, I thought that when I launched a beauty brand that I would lose customers and, and, and other beauty brands would, would, would think, hey, those their guy those guys are competitors. They're going yeah. do, they're doing beauty product. <laughs> yeah. We don't we don't want to work with them. It's my biz my agency business has only increased because mm -hmm. brands are saying, Oh, well, you guys are an agency that also sells product, then you know you can yeah. relate. You you know yeah. basically you're trying to solve the same problems that we're trying to solve. You're trying to bring Love awareness that. and engagement to your brand and using your own agency services and they mm -hmm. they want the same thing too so it's my yeah. business so to your point to your answer your question both 
parts of the business having okay food. yeah yeah so like the saying goes right it's like you eat your own dog food or you drink the cool or not drink the cooler but you drink your own cooler, right? <laughs> right, so, right, yeah. right so okay we, we walk the walk and walk the top the top whatever yeah exactly exactly i love that now um why so so i i see i see now that you're, you're doing both and your business has grown especially in the agency area but why uh like why did the like how did the product came to be? I saw in one of your videos you were talking to one of your friends, your your chemist, right? And they meant he mentioned something about vitamin C. Um, so tell me more about that. Like how how did this product came to be? Yeah, yeah. I had no intention of launching my own beauty brand. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was I've sure. been quote, I've been quoted in the past saying that the beauty <laughs> market <laughs> the beauty market is too it's too crowded. Yeah, there are too many products out there. It's hard to cut through the clutter. It's hard to 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 acquire customers and make your brand be known. Yeah, and I was totally against it. I would say, Juan, you're, you've you've been a, you know a great chemist. You developed so many great products for other other brands. Why don't you do your own thing? And, and my my response to them was that the world does not need another beauty product. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And here you are, starting yeah. another brand. Oh, man. Until, yeah. until <laughs> I came up and saw an opportunity for, for a product that could be game changing. And it's it, it, it had served a major need in the marketplace. It and it would only and I would only do it because we we had IP, we had we had patents, we were mm. able to apply yeah. and get three issued patents for our, our skincare technology. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do clinical testing independently that yeah. showed and delivered outstanding performance. Yeah. So it was based on those three things, which is one, having a concept that, that answered a big major need gap mm -hmm. in the marketplace. Two, we had IP, we were able to uh, get three patents issued to protect our our technology. And third, independent clinical testing, which helped us, which showed us that we had a strong, high performing product. And it was based on those three things and having those that we then said, okay, we've got to launch this brand. And then Beauty Stack Cosmetics, the skincare brand was born. So now my next question is, so your need gap, your IP, your independent testing, how long did that take you? That was over the course of about three, three to four years. Three to four years. So wait, you can't just throw together a quick brand and, and <laughs> launch a product line in a month and 30 days, right? Isn't, isn't this a get quick rich kind of program here? <laughs> and, and again, this, this was, this was something that this was a, this was a spare time type yeah. of thing. And it was only after getting, after reaching certain hurdles yeah. that we said, okay, let's push it to the next level. And meanwhile, yeah. I had my agency business going on. In the yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that, that's how, that's how it happened. So it, yeah. it was again, over time, it wasn't, mm -hmm. we, it's not like four years ago, we said, we're going to launch a brand in 2019. Yeah. It was only when we, we crossed off the last checkbox yeah. and that became, then we said, let's launch the time is right now. So in, in, in each of these need gaps, IP and independent testing, were there times when you were like, why am I doing this? Uh, why are we even pushing a product? I don't know if we're, we're, you know, this, this is going to work. This is going to sell. Like, have you ever experienced any of that during the past three to four years? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, and it's, it's only because after we got some success after one of the after each of those steps did it give us more motivation and energy and excitement about continuing to the next okay okay yeah let's so if you don't mind let, let's dive a little deeper in one of the each of the sections because our viewers you know they, they may be entrepreneur beauty entrepreneurs that are like you know I, I i'm just starting my research or um you know i i i i came up with this awesome product and I need some sort of IP for it or or should I even go for an IP and then of course going into the independent testing so let's dive a little deeper into that now for your need gap how did you figure that out I mean obviously it's like the friends and family asking you right yeah hey there's a need for it but how, like did you go beyond that yeah, yeah well 
keep in mind as an as an agency, I, I had a, a large database of consumers at my disposal to yeah, okay. test concepts and ideas with. Okay. So, so everyone should start an agency. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But but in this scenario though, like so if for, for those that don't have an agency, what, what would you recommend then? I would recommend friends and family. Friends and family. Okay. Friends, friends and family. Uh, yep. Friends and family and your friends and family, they've they've got to be the type that are going to they're not gonna humor you. They're going to be yeah. brutally honest with you. Yep. Because if the idea is dumb or it's not relevant or interesting. Yeah, I don't know now. <laughs> yeah, you want to know. You want to know that as soon as, soon as possible. So yeah. Uh, so if you if you're gonna do that through through, through friends and family, make sure that make sure make sure you just you you give them a, 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 you ask the question in a way that's not you're not forcing them to say yes because they're your friend. You know, yeah. hey, be honest with me. Hey, yeah. I, I I need I need to know whether this is something that's interesting or I should try to come up with another idea. Yeah. No offense, no offense taken. Tell me your, your honest reaction. Yeah. So that's my recommendation for those mm -hmm. entrepreneurs out there that do not have consumers at their fingertips. Yeah. Okay. It, so what would be the next step then? Does it make sense to reach out to an agency like yourself or other, other beauty um, experts in the area and say, hey, I have this idea. Uh, I have this product that I'm thinking of producing. Do you think anyone would want, want it or buy it? Yes, the mo the more data you can get, the better. Mm. So, and that could you know through your friends and family, it could use your social mm. network. You know, yeah. there are plenty of ways, or or, or an agency uh, that, yep. that can help as well. And there are a lot. There are a lot, and, and you know, we're entrepreneurs too, so we know. Yeah, we, we we know a lot of other startups don't have a lot of capital to work with. We work with we work with large and small, and are able to accommodate uh, mm. any, any size. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. Now, um, what about you know? Sometimes I get questions um, that ask like, "Hey, I don't want to share my idea. I'm a, I'm afraid they might steal it. They might take it and 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 run with it." So, what would you say to that? It's a risk. Yeah, it, it's a risk you have to take. Okay, so you don't carry like a contract and have them sign in blood every time <laughs> you're like, "Here, sign this contract." There, there are, you know, I, I, I've worked I've worked with entrepreneurs that they, you know, they want it. Signed, yeah. Before they talk to anyone about anything, and that and that's yeah. fine. If but if you're looking for to get a lot of more data from more yeah. people, yeah. it just becomes time consuming to have every single one sign an NDA. It's going to be yeah. tough to get to get information. So so my recommendation is keep the idea broad and general enough where you're not giving every any you know giving too much away, but mm -hmm. it's enough enough to get a fear a, a fair read. Mm. on your concept yeah so now the second part is the ip now right so at what point did you did it make sense like yes let's have an ip um for this product like what was the trigger for that uh, the trigger is first of all so me and my team were, were chemists so uh, we are able to look through patents that are relevant to our topic and kind of get a feel for you know if if there's a space if, in other words if there's a place where no one else had this, mm, yeah. uh, this type of product so that's what that's one advantage we, we did have so okay so that helped us in terms of knowing whether hey is our idea unique yeah. enough that we could apply and actually get a patent so we kind mm, of have yeah. to go, going into it it costs money no mm -hmm. doubt yeah, Legally, it's going to cost money, you know, no matter where you go, yeah. no matter how, you know, how advanced or, or, or you are, you know, I'm not a lawyer, so I need, I needed that yeah. uh, uh, piece in order to help sure that we were, were wording everything correctly and that we were able to uh, better our chances of actually getting a patent mm -hmm. issue. So, so that's, and again, not every idea might be patentable, but that doesn't, that yeah. doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not a good idea or it's not unique enough. It's just yeah. one, it's just from a scientist perspective, it was one thing that was just important to me yeah. and my team to have that locked in. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Now I have, I have two burning questions. Again, I'm sure <laughs> others will, will, will want to know this. A, um, should I hire a chemist 
if I have a product, do I need a chemist? I mean, I, there's a lot of products out there that, you know, it's just trial and error and they try it on their own skin and it works great. Okay, let's let's do it that way. Like, and then, and then there are others where, okay, we've hired a chemist to do that. So what would you suggest? A, a lot of, a lot of entre beauty entrepreneurs reach out to me and, and ask me, can I be their chemist? Mm. Can I help? Yeah. Like, Ron, I know you have a brand and I, I, I see what you've done with your brand. Do you consult? Do you help other, other entrepreneurs get product off the ground? Yeah. And I, I try to speak, to speak and make time to talk to. In fact, I have one coming up uh, uh, tomorrow to speak, an entrepreneur to speak to. And I try, I try to, I give him this type of advice. I say, what I can do is I could under, hear your concept if you're willing to share it with me, and then I could connect you with a what I think is going to be a good contract manufacturer mm. that could not only make your product, but also they have chemists on the you know built into those into their companies uh, that okay. could help, that could help help you formulate and 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 and, and commercialize your idea to meet your right. spec. And it's something that you could own as well. In other words, yeah. you're not, you, you know, you'll you'll have an arrangement where you're actually having them make a recipe that is going to be yours. Yeah. And they will then, and they will, then they will mass produce it for you as well. So wow. that's the yeah. that's a type of introduction that I can help. Uh, you know, some some of these beauty entrepreneurs uh, make where they don't necessarily need to have a separate chemist. In other words, the chemist is part mm. of the of part of the contract. Part of the package. Correct. It's part of the package. Yeah. The development of their product is part of the package. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. So yeah, they already have the chemist on staff, mm -hmm. and then they they're helping you manufacture it, so you don't have to even have to have your own lab um, to to produce the product. Okay, yeah, that that's that's wonderful. There's some really golden nuggets there. Um, now my second burning question is: All right, thinking about it from from the entrepreneur's perspective, they're probably freaking out like, "Oh my god, this sounds like this co it's going to cost a lot of money." <laughs> what type of budget should they have in mind if they're looking at you know like uh, hire, you know working with a manufacturer, you know working with a legal team to get the IP, you know like what is a realistic number that they should have bare minimum? If not, don't even try to go down this path until you actually have that budget ready to go. It really, you know, David, it really varies. Uh, the thing, because beauty is such a hot consumer sector right now, mm -hmm. growing double digit globally, there's a lot of players. It The cost to enter and become a player and become become your in and launch your own beauty brand is, is getting lower and lower hmm. it it really it really depends it really depends because there's when you work with these contract manufacturers that make product mm -hmm. for you the term that you'll always hear is minimum minimum order quantities moq okay, okay. so that is okay if i want to develop this fantastic lipstick yeah you're going to find out what the minimum order quantity is. In other words, mm. this is the minimum order you have to you have to purchase and buy from the contract manufacturer. Yeah. For them to actually, it's even worth their while to even make because okay. again, cost on their side. They don't want to put a whole team of chemists and 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 plant operators and manufacturers to yeah. develop ten lipsticks. Yeah. The the, co the, co the cost and economics don't make sense for that. So. They may only make, they may, the smallest quantity they may make the one is 1,000 or 2,000. And there's a cost attached to that. Okay. And obviously, you know, with economies of scale, the larger your order, the smaller yeah. the price. And yeah. the smaller the order, the smaller the order, the lower mm -hmm. the price. I mean, the higher the price. So yeah, it really, it really varies. So the only thing I can, I can say generally is that the lower, the order, the more expensive it can be. But okay. again, there are a lot of manufacturers that are working more and more with entrepreneurs yeah. on helping them get the brand off the ground with a minimum, a smaller order quantity. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get some numbers in my mind now. Like, for example, just working with a lawyer, a lawyer might be 200 bucks an hour, right? And then next thing you know, like, uh, like uh, typically I've never, uh, 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 gotten an IP before, but how much does an IP typically cost, and how long does that take? It could take a, a couple of years. Yeah, 
One one thing that you can do is you could you could apply for a patent but not con, not continue going through it. So they, they, you mm. can. So you mark it patent pending. Patent pending, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Pending. So yeah. at least at least alerts your competitors that yeah, you, you, there's some movement going on there. You you know you're, yep. you're working towards that. Yeah. They don't they don't know where you are in the process, but at yeah, least yeah. some sort of some sort of warning out there. Mm. And that's and that's low cost. That may be a thousand. That might be a thousand dollars. A thousand bucks. Okay. Okay. So we're looking at a thousand bucks on legal fees, and then by, like if let's say we want the minimal, because so I'm guessing for most uh, uh, beauty entrepreneurs that are just starting off, they they have one one product that they want to just launch first. They want to get the minimum order just to kind of send it out and try it out. Let's say they want an order of a hundred. Uh, we just we just say uh, having another budget of. A thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. Would that be enough to you know, get them off their feet? It would be in the thousands. So I'd say oh, maybe, okay. maybe let's say if, if you need a number, mm -hmm. plan, plan on plan around five five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars for for the for the manufacturing and the and the I guess the the testing of the product. Okay, so we're looking at around six thousand dollars. Okay, that's really really good to know. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so yeah, don't think it's like oh yeah, six thousand dollars. I'm completely done, and it's six thousand dollars of of cash, but also pure sweat, right? And hard, you know, hard work. Absolutely. Mm. Nothing's overnight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, three to four years, right? For for your product. Um, now, so, so, so then the, what, what happened the next step? So you got your IP independent testing. So what happened there? Did you, did you work with some firms that did the testing for you or did you, uh, did you already have relationships? Um, or did you start the groups, the test groups yourself? Like how, how does the testing work? Well, so we're, we're in, in high performance skincare. So we we wanted a testing facility that could test for skincare concerns like lines and wrinkles a firmness and tightness of skin evening of skin tone uh, yeah. those those types of parameters so we wanted we wanted a testing center that, that was that was of how do you express this that had really great that worked with great brands or had great great quality and was mm -hmm. was respected is kind of is what i'm what i'm trying yeah. to so they okay. wanted to be respected and the reason why is because we had we had our sights on a certain retailer that we know has high standards for testing clinical mm -hmm. testing okay and that retailer is qvc uh, because their products are shown on TV, and mm -hmm. TV has a has a big requirement in terms of the claims you can make on on TV. Uh, yeah. So we knew that way back when we were starting that we again, if we got good results, we wanted to use those results and try to get help us help that you know have those results help us get into important retailers like QVC. Uh. So, so we found we found a testing center, and. Yep that was very reputable, very respected, and did our clinical testing there. And okay. the results, David, were outstanding. And again- Yeah, yeah. so yeah, can you, can you share some of the results? Uh, like, what, what what was it like? So the centers, what what did they do? Did they send it to different like dermatologists? Did they send it out over to uh, different practitioners? Like, what was that like? And what were, what were some of the feedback on, on your product? Well, well, they, it's kind of it's kind of a of a they provide you a menu of testing options mm -hmm. that you pick and choose from. Okay. So you could pick the number of people. And by the way, in a, in a clinical testing setting, it's usually a minimum. Of most a good test sample is about is about thirty participants. Mm, okay. And again, they're using the product blinded, and then mm -hmm. you determine how long you want them to to use it for uh, before yeah. the, before the subjects are are graded for the results. For, you know, starting at time zero before application, and then yeah, you know, if they're using it every day for 30, 60, 90 days, mm. uh, yeah. then at each interval, 
And a, a dermatologist in that case would be grading them to show, okay, well, you use, you've been using the product for four weeks now mm -hmm. and compared to a photo of what you looked like before you started and the way you look now, yeah. I'm seeing an X percent decrease in wrinkles. Mm. I'm seeing an X percent increase in the evenness of skin tone. Yeah. I'm seeing, I'm seeing firmer, a percentage, 20, 40% increase in firm skin firmness. Mm. The types of, of testing uh, that they, in our case, they did for us. And we, and we were able to see uh, that our product tested very well among, amongst those parameters. Yeah, yeah. So so some of the, the benefits I see from this, from a marketing standpoint too, is that, yeah, you're, you're qualifying your product, making sure it actually works, but also you can use these test results and use it as testimonials and feedback, right? Absolutely. Um, this is what the product does and we have the proofs in the pudding, right? We have, we have the evidence here, we Absolutely. have the data. Yeah, it's and, data, and it's fact. Data, it's data, it's validation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, love it. So then, then so at, right after the independent testing, then you already had in mind like, okay, I want to be on QVC. Are there other 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 like uh, channels that you wanted your product to be on? Um, and and how did that how did that go? Yeah. So we knew that QVC was going to be the toughest in terms of the the type of testing support and validation yeah. they needed. So that was we kind of built the brand around, hey, if QVC would approve it, anyone else would. So okay. we're covered in it. We're, we're covered for other 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 retailers as well. Mm. That's that how that's how it was how it was designed. And and just so that you know we got approved we're approved then QVC. We will be going I will be going up and launching with Oh, nice. So, so, so in uh, like in, in the next month or two, you're, you're going to be on QVC. It hasn't, it, you're not on QVC just yet, but you have been approved and you'll be on QVC and we'll be able to see you on TV. Right? That's, right. That's, right. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, I guess this is your first step. Um, what's your, what's your next phase for your product line? Do you want to get it into more of the brick and mortar store? Because QVC, for those that don't know, it's, 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 it's on TV, right? Yep. People can, can see it and they pick up the phone and they can order it right, right from their phone and it goes through the, T the QVC system. Right? That's correct. That's correct. Um, so what, what are some of the other channels that you're looking at now, uh, that you may open up the doors for you too, now that you're, you're in QVC? Well, we're, we're currently sold and we are one of the top sellers in a, in, in a, a e-commerce retailer called Violet Gray. Okay. So we're, we're sold there. We're also sold at skin on skinstore.com. Mm -hmm. So those are our retail partners uh, right now. And we're yeah. looking at some others. We want to, we want to keep our product in specialty niche channels. Uh, and QVC is going to be a, a, another extension. I would call it niche, but they're another channel in terms of you know, you know to me to for me to tell my story uh, to a broader audience, and that's why that's important for us. But okay. if some viewers might wonder, uh, do we have Sephora or Alta on our sites yet? Mm -hmm. uh, not not yet. Yeah, uh, we we want to stay a little bit smaller and tighter. Uh, before, yeah. uh, before uh, going uh, to those big retailers. Yeah. Now, do you worry too about demands too? Like, sure, there's, there's most people think of like, oh man, there's not enough demand, but there's the opposite problem too, right? If there's too much demand, you know, keeping up with the manufacturing, the, you know, meeting their, their quotas. Do you, do you worry about that? That is, that's, we, I worry about that. And I did, had no idea about that now. It's one of the <laughs> things, that, one of the biggest things I've learned yeah. In, in going from an agency service to a product to consumer uh, goods service yeah. is managing inventory and demand. Mm. It's, yeah. it's if you, cause again, if you put too much money towards inventory, you have no cash and you're sitting on inventory. Yep. If you order small, you know, we talked about, you know, that minimum order quantity. If you order small, yep. And for some reason, your brand blows up, and you are selling. And then, <laughs> yeah, then you de you're dealing with customer service mm. with people that either ordered, want to order, yeah, and or they've you've ordered, they've ordered, 
you've taken their credit card, but yet you don't have the product. So you yeah. Deal with that. You, you deal with returns. Yeah. And so I've been on, I've been on both sides. It's just, it's, yeah. it, it's hard to predict. And again, to your point about getting into those bigger doors, that would be an issue to contain with. So again, keeping right now, I want to keep the brand small, tight, controlled. Yeah. Under control, control, right? Yeah. Under control. Again, we're only 10, we're only 10 months old. So yeah, yeah. It's, we don't have enough data or history to, to know how to respond yeah. yet. So, and yeah, so baby see. steps, right? Baby steps. Yeah, yeah. beautiful. Um, so then, uh, so you're getting ready to be on QVC um, and you're, you're, you're looking at slowly moving up to different brands. Are you, um, are you also working with influencers too, since that's part of your agency too, kind of yeah. working with agency now? Yeah. Now, with your product, so let's 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 dive a little deeper into your product now. Like, who is your target market for your product? Like, what is this product best fit for? Well, our, our product, and I, I didn't, I don't think I told the the, the viewers yet. The, so the product is about it focuses on vitamin C, which is a very popular, well known ingredient. Now, people know it that they you know they take vitamin C when you know you know to help prevent and get over colds. Mm -hmm. Vitamin C does great things for the skin as well. And you need to apply it topically. And consumers have been doing that for many years now. But the big downside about it is that it, it turns brown, it oxidizes when it's exposed to air. Mm -hmm. And consumers, many beauty consumers know that, that if, they're pro if a vitamin C product is starting to turn all orange or brown, it's not working anymore. Mm -hmm. They should either toss it or not buy that product. Mm -hmm. So where our IP comes in is that we have uh, three patents on the ability to stabilize pure vitamin C. So it doesn't turn brown, it doesn't oxidize, it stays pure, potent, and it works from the minute you open the bottle till the end. Yeah. And, and so that's the, that's the basis for our IP. And what it does for your skin is that it helps to firm and tighten skin, diminish lines and wrinkles, even out skin tone, and mm -hmm. diminish the look of pores. So that is something that, in, in our testing, we've seen consumers want that whether they're 25 years old or 65 years old. Okay. It meets all. It meets. Yeah. <laughs> all, all consumers raise their hand like, "Yes, yes, I'm, give me that. <laughs> I, want, I want that like yesterday." Yeah. And, but our, it, what we're noticing now in our, our sweet spot are women. Women tend to be 35 plus in like on product because we're a little, we're a little, we're not, we're not mass, we're not drugstore price. We're around, we're, we're, we're prestige price. We're, we're, we're $80. Okay. Okay. Uh, which is, which is, it's very competitive. We think it's, a, we think it's a great value compared to a lot of other vitamin C products in the market, which we've seen mm. don't have perfect stability. Yeah. And again, we're able to give consumers the ability to have a product that you know is going to last. They don't, they don't have to worry about it, you know, uh, being becoming you know, rising and not working. Mm -hmm. So, can you give, give like provide some reference, like uh, with the shelf life, because you're able to stabilize the vitamin C. What is the typical shelf life of the traditional uh, vitamin C product um, versus your product? We, we've seen competitors start shifting and oxidizing in, in a matter of weeks in front of our eyes. Yeah. Ours is part of our patent is showing the stability. We have up to three years. Wow. So weeks to three years. Yeah. In fact, yeah. one of the things, one of the things we did is we, we did a, we did a time-lapse video showing our product versus three leading competitors to show hmm. show consumers yeah. Yeah. The, how our product stacks up against leading leading competitors in terms of stability. Hmm. And, and in those videos, you'll see them shifting in orange uh, yeah. while ours stays the same. That's awesome. Now, um, do you have your own site that they can also buy from other than the other vendors? We do, yeah. So we, we, we sell directly to the consumers and anyone can just, can just uh, click on to beautystat.com. Mm, okay. So if they want that product, awesome. Um, now, 
let's let's shift gears a little bit now for all the beauty entrepreneurs listening and through your whole journey you know your over three to four years of just coming with this one product um what would what would be some of the feedback or or tips that you would give the beauty entrepreneurs when they're first starting off what would you what would you tell them funny you should ask because i, I just had an, an outlet just asked me this question yeah. earlier this morning and i and <laughs> perfect <laughs> and, and i'm formulating my answer because i need to respond by editing okay i'm putting you on the <laughs> spot now. You are, you are now this, no, this is great <laughs> so i'm going to try to i'm going to try to articulate it Okay. So the lesson, the, the recommendation of the lesson I learned is that I went into, I went into this business given we were an agency and we were used to going, working with brands direct to consumer using social media, etc. We thought that would be our strong point that direct to consumer said, uh, customer acquisition is going to be a strong point. And we kind of did not put a focus on retail, even though, as I told you, you know, we wanted the clinical testing to be able to appeal to a QVC. We didn't go out, the plan was to go to QVC later we, and other retailers later, going out the gate. Right. What happened is that it took us so long to get our landing pages right and our creative. And there was a just, it just it was a long delay there. And we were, we were like, hey, we, you know, we could be selling our, our, our line to retailers. And we didn't we didn't do that initially. So we kind of we wasted a few months, and it was only after a few months that we said, okay, listen, omni-channel strategy. Let's try to reach customers everywhere, direct consumer as well as online, yeah. retail, and so that was the lesson learned. Fortunately, we were able to catch up. We were able to get into some real solid, you know, retailers that I'm really proud to be in while we're able to get our direct to consumer uh, acquisition strategy in place. Nice, nice. So you're, you're saying like focus on, on, you know, not just one channel and, but work on all, all the other channels. Yes. Also like build, start building up your, your website, your marketing material, getting all that prepped uh, rather than just waiting step by step, do multiple things all at once. And, but uh, I, I'm sure you would first plan it out first, and yep. then um, pretty much go with all, you know, all omni-channel, as you mentioned, in all, in all channels, all at once. Okay. Yep. That's, that's, that's my advice. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so I guess we're, we're getting near to the end of the show. So how, how can uh, our audience reach you? How can they connect with you? You can email me directly at ron at beautystat.com mm -hmm. or on Instagram mm -hmm. at Ron Robinson Cosmetic Chemist. And of course, our brand is at Beauty Stat. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for your time. All this information, the episode, as usual, um, it will be on our website. And uh, all the reference uh, links will add down below. And again, Ron, thank you so much for, for sharing your experience, your knowledge, and to, to to be, you know, to, to help so much to our community. And, you. uh, you know, thank you. Thank you so much, David. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good day. You See too. ya. Bye-bye. Okay,